So in the first half of this, I demonstrated how to write the case-insensitive st string compare using caller saved registers. And what's characteristic of that solution is that in the body of this loop, we need to be saving and restoring registers around a call. In particular, because we modify i within the loop, we need to save i once, and then because it's used once after each call to the function, we have two loads of i. Um, because s1 and s2 aren't modified in the loop, we only need to load them right before we use them. But you can see that we're doing a lot of saving and restoring mixed up in the loop here. What I'm going to show you now is an alternative implementation um, using Kali saved registers, which is going to reduce the amount of stack work that we have to do in the body of the loop. So let me go ahead and show you that version of the code. Again, I'm going to allocate a stack frame, and I believe it's going to end up being the same size stack frame, um, but I'm going to figure that out for sure when we get to that point. We still save RA um, as we did before, but what's different, instead of allocating S1 and S2 onto the stack, what I'm going to do is I'm going to free up some call E saved registers, some S registers, so that I can copy S1 and S2 um, into those registers and use them in the body of the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save, I'm going to go ahead and save S0 to a four offset of the stack pointer. I'm going to save S1 to an eight offset of the stack pointer. So on and so forth. I'm freeing up some of these Kali saved registers. And so because they're Kali saved, I need to save them before I use them, unlike the caller saved where I save them before I call a function. So I've freed up some registers, and what this lets me do is um, now I can take these variables that are in A0 and A1, and I can copy them into the S registers. And so because this is called S1 in the code, I'm going to go ahead and allocate it to S1. And so A0 gets copied to register S1. And A1 I'm copying to S2. So now I've allocated these into these S registers. I'm ready to continue uh, with I, which before we allocated to T0, I'm going to uh, again allocate that to a call E save register S0. So I do a load immediate into S0 of 0, and that gives us I, and now I'm ready to enter the, the body of the loop. And notice I left myself a little space here in case I need to, to get myself some more call E save registers later in the code. So now I'm ready to do CI loop. Um, the first thing I have to do is add S1 to I1, and what we notice is both of those values are in registers, and so I can add them together into, say, T1. I'm adding S1 and S0, and that gives me the address of S1i. And to actually get S1i, we need to do the load byte. I'm going to do that into A0 again, because I'm going to call the function. It's an argument to the function that gets us S1i. Now we're actually ready to do the call. There's no registers that need to be saved before that call, because um, there's nothing in a temporary or a caller saved register that needs to be alive. So the only thing that's in a temporary register is this T1, but we've used it, and we're not going to use it again in the rest of the execution. So it's OK if the called function overwrites it. So I can do the call to two lower, and what that means is that after that, V0 is going to hold C1. So because V0 is a caller saved register, I know I need to do something with this variable. I need to move it somewhere else before I do the second call to two lower. 
And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to free myself up a fourth Kali saved register, and I'm going to copy, or I'm going to move, I'm going to move V0 into S3. So this is going to now hold C1. So now I'm ready to, I've completely handled the, the first statement here. I'm going to handle the second column. Basically, it's going to be the same thing, except for loading S1, I'm going to use S2. So I'm going to add into T1 S2 and S0. And that gets me the address of S2i. And then a load byte and again into A0 so that I can call this function zero offset of T1 so that T1 was the address of S2 so doing the load byte actually gets me the value of S2i and again I'm ready to do the jump and link to two lower because I have no caller saved registers that need to be alive past this function so after this function V0, V0 is going to hold C2 and I can go ahead and I can immediately do this comparison of C1 and C2 because those are both in registers. C1 is in S3 and C2 is in V0. And so again, I invert the condition to s for the case to skip over this. So if, if they're not equal, if S3 is not equal to V0, then I go to CI done. Otherwise, I increment I. Again, I is in a register. It's in S0, so I don't have to load it. I just have to do S0 uh, plus 1, so this is the plus plus i, and I can do the continue, which is again a jump back to the, the beginning of the loop, to CI loop, an unconditional jump. So now I'm ready to handle this alternate to the if, which is CI done. Again, C1 and C2 are in registers, so I want to put the result into V0. So this is a subtraction, so I'm going to subtract, put the result into V0, and I'm subtracting uh, S3, subtracting V0 from S3. That gives me CI minus C1 minus C2. Um, and I am ready to return from the function, but before I can do that, I have to fix up my stack. And so uh, first we'll figure out how big our stack frame was. We saved one, two, three, four, five things, each four bytes. So again, it's a 20 um, byte stack frame that we allocated. Um, but unlike the caller saved registers, I need to restore all of the callee saved registers back to what value they had before this call because the function that called me might have been put some useful value in there. And so what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to do the exact opposite of this whole block of code. And so uh, for everywhere there's a store word, I'm going to do a load word, but everything else is the same. So I'm going to load the RA back in, I'm going to load S0 back in. I'm going to load S1 back in, so on and so forth. And then I need to, to remove the stack frame, which is the opposite of this thing. Instead of subtracting 20 from the stack pointer, I'm going to add 20 to the stack pointer. So when you write this code on a, oops, when you write this code on a machine, typically what I do is I copy this whole block of code and copy it down there, convert all the store words into low words, take the subtract and move it to the bottom and change it into an add, and that prevents me from making any uh, bugs from, uh, you know, mistyping one of these instructions. It's also faster. Um, and then the last step is the jump RA. So if we compare this code um, to the, the caller saved version, what we can see is that 
especially if I zoom out a little. We can see in the caller saved version, there was a very short prologue and a very short epilogue, but there was a large body of the loop. What we've done in the, the callee saved version is we've, we have a larger prologue and epilogue but a much smaller loop, that we've moved a lot of the work of saving and restoring registers out of the logic of the function into the prologue and the epilogue, which is a good trade-off in general because it's much simpler to, to save all these registers once and know that you've allocated variables in here um, to S registers and then you don't have to worry about, oh, do I need to save this register here or not or, you know, uh, when do I have to load it, um, that it simplifies the logic of the function. And the reason why this happens um, in particular is that the, this happens, um, I guess, yeah, in particular, when you have functions that are in loops, then you're guaranteed to have variables that are both live before the function call and need to be live after the function call. Um, and so almost any situation where you have function calls within a loop, it's going to make sense to use callee saved registers. That's going to simplify your writing of the function's logic. Um, if your function is, uh, a, is, doesn't have a loop, um, then it might actually be simpler to use the caller saved registers because many of the register values might um, not actually be live after the call um, and so you don't actually need to to save them to the stack. Um, so that demonstrates why we might be interested in using callee saved register.